You already know the time Rambling is no damn crime Me, I'm just a regular man But low-key salty, I ain't got no tan Room on rambling time Hello YouTube, Rumon Kram here, back with another video. And today is the debut episode of Rumon Rambles. And boy, have I chosen a great subject to ramble on. If you didn't notice, today we are talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you must be wondering, Rumon, why is this such a great topic? Well, I have about 14 years of content so far to discuss with you all. And that's a lot. 14 years. Kevin Feige began the Marvel Cinematic Universe all the way back in 2008 when he casted Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. And I remember when the film first came out. We all had our thing, we all had our like, you know, eh, we weren't really sure where the vision was going, but Kevin Feige did. And man, did he provide us with a great vision. Robert Downey Jr. was not only amazing as Iron Man, it also began something very beautiful. And today, I want to talk about that vision. Because it has grown so much. There are so many characters now in this universe that you wouldn't even think possible maybe 14 years ago when Iron Man first came out. I mean, if I time travel right now and told my 2008 self that, hey, listen, Spider-Man, Deadpool, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, they are all coming to the Marvel Universe and we're... It's going to be amazing because they're going to fight this awesome villain. I probably would not believe you. Okay? Marvel has shown us year by year that they know what the fans want. And sure, there have been some misses, but I say they have been more hits than misses. Okay? And this was seen in Infinity War when we saw the ultimate cultivation of the vision Kevin Feige started with Iron Man. Well, I should say Endgame. Because it brought all our beloved ca uh, characters that we've been seeing throughout the years on the screen to fight one common enemy, which is Thanos. And I gotta admit, that was pretty awesome because I grew up with this phase. And that's, you know, phase one or known as the Infinity Saga. And it was really badass. I loved every second of it. Now we're in Infinity 2, uh, Saga 2 basically, which is the uh, Multiverse Saga, which is just as interesting in my opinion, I find the multiverse to be quite fascinating, the storyline itself, and, you know, I actually do believe in it as well. You know, I'm sure there's a Ruman out there who has a better life than me, uh, not making YouTube videos on a Sunday night. But anyway, that's, this video is not about that. Anyway, so, the main question here about what I want to talk about is, is Marvel producing too much content? And I know this is kind of like a weird thing to say, perhaps even pretentious to a fact that, well, you know... Like, we're getting all this content, aren't you happy? And the truth is, I'm a little bit in the middle, you know? When I think back to 2008, when it first started, I remember we had Iron Man, and then the same year we had Incredible Hulk. So we had two Marvel films, which is great. But then 2009 did not give us any Marvel film at all. We skipped to 2010, then Iron Man 2 came out, and then 2011 it was Thor, Captain America, and then finally 2012 was The Avengers, which kind of just, you know, brought that all together. You know, the content was good. It was almost one to two films a year. You know, it kept us excited for more. And then as we kept going, more films started coming out. They bumped it up to three. And, you know, that was pretty cool too because I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I love watching these Marvel films. Fast forward to about 2019, 2020. Disney Plus releases and Marvel has an idea saying, well, why are we making all these future films when you can also make shows? Now, don't get me wrong. This idea was pretty dumb. I actually do enjoy the fact that, oh yeah, I don't have to wait for a feature film to come out. I can watch an eight-episode series, and that will still keep me invested. And WandaVision, uh, Captain America and the Falcon, the Winter Soldier and Falcon, sorry. Uh, Loki, um, She-Hulk, uh, there's more What If. These have been pretty great, I'm not going to lie. But I'm also going to be honest, it has been a lot. I have not watched Moon Knight yet. I have yet to watch She-Hulk. The reason because I just feel like there's so much content out right now, it's a bit hard for me to keep up. And this is me personally. I don't know how everyone else feels about this. But, you know, it's true. I genuinely, you know, I needed a break. 
because there's so much like Marvel content coming out. There's so much things you kind of have to comprehend to understand to the next phase that you're like, eh, you know. But here's the thing, I'm not bored with Marvel because I know Marvel has a lot in store for us. And especially with their track record with what they have done, I know they're not going to disappoint. For example, No Way Home, bringing back Andrew and Toby. That's something I never thought was going to happen in my lifetime because I thought Andrew was one Spider-Man, Toby was one Spider-Man. That was just a different generation, different film that was never going to translate into what we have now. But it did. Feige listened to us and he actually gave us that. Following that, he gave a Charlie Cox as Daredevil after he had that hit Netflix series show, which is awesome because he's great at Daredevil. And now coming up with Deadpool 3, we have Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine. I mean, I feel like that's like the biggest, I don't want to say fan service, but that's like the biggest thing ever as a Marvel fan because I also grew up with the X-Men. You know, I knew they were a separate universe and... That universe was strictly, I knew that was where I was going to get to see Wolverine. And with Logan, that ended his story. So I did not expect him to be back. And because they're doing the multiverse saga, they're not really ruining anything. Because it's the multiverse. Anything can happen. That was one version of Wolverine. There's another version of Wolverine probably still kicking it and being a badass. And that's what I love about this multiverse saga. There are so many opportunities now that you can actually introduce without coming up with a BS reason. But the reason why I say sometimes the content is a lot is because there is a lot to catch up on. If someone watches Infinity War today, just straight up just watches Infinity War, they will enjoy the movie because it's very action-packed, but they won't really understand each of the characters and why they are the way they are. And if you're like someone like me who actually does care about that, you're most likely going to have to tell them, well, you know, this is like, the 15th movie you gotta go back to the first movie if you really want to know why that character is the way he is or what journey they took to get to the point they are in now which not gonna lie is a lot like i can't imagine me someone coming up to me and say oh yeah you like this movie but if you want to know the entire arc of everyone go back 15 movies before that's almost 15 fucking hours how are you going to catch up 15 hours just to understand this one movie and that's the thing where I think Marvel Cinematic Universe has kind of put themselves in a little wind of just, like, confusion. Because, basically, it means if you want to keep up with whatever's going on right now, you have to watch every single show. But sometimes, every single show is not going to be good. Moon Knight is a decent show. It's not the best show I've ever seen. There are some episodes that are just boring as shit. And I could not sit through them. Right? Um... Uh, same episode, same thing with the Winter Soldier and the Falcon. There are some episodes I just don't like. And there are some episodes that are really great and keep you hooked on. And that's the point. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has grown to a point where you can't enter it in the middle without getting confused. I mean, of course, if you know these guys from the comics, I guess you have a little bit of understanding. But another thing is, the Cinematic Universe does not follow the comics all the way. There are some similar things, but there are other tweaks that they made to make the characters more unique. And to kind of show why they make the decisions in the films the way they do. So for you, you're just like, well, I have the comic book knowledge, but I don't really have their knowledge in the universe. And that kind of throws you off for a loop. I'm not going to lie. So that brings back to the question with, is this a good thing? And another thing to bring up... You know, a couple of months ago, the VFX team complained that they've been being overworked. And which makes sense because they have been putting in a lot of projects out at a very constant and quick pace. Now, I'm not saying quick as in, oh, the, everything's sloppy. Obviously, there's a story. But it's to a point where the workers are getting exhausted because after they finish one project, there's already another project on the way. On top of that, Marvel Cinematic Universe has plans till 2028, which essentially means by the end of 2028, we're going to have 20 years of Marvel Cinematic content, which is a pretty good thing because, well, holy shit, that's awesome. You know, Kevin Feige started a dream in 2008 and now 20 years later, he actually is building that dream and it's going pretty well. But let's say if you want to watch a film from... A point in phase two you might not understand what's going on if unless if you go back into phase one now of course this is not true for every single project right 
you can watch Shang-Chi and still understand what the hell's going on because that's the origin story. But then something like, oh, the post credit scene, you're just like, well, I don't know who these people are. And if you're a person who wants to be more understanding and more involved about the characters, you're naturally going to be like, well, maybe I should go back to where it started and just go one by one. Now, I know I'm trying to insinuate that, oh, you know, you watch one movie, you got to start from the beginning, right? But, you know, I feel like that might be a bit too extreme. What I'm trying to say is, if it's not an origin movie, like, it's like watching Thor 4, Love and Thunder, just randomly, never watching any of the Thor films, and you're not really understanding what this character is. Like, you look at Thor, and like, okay, well, alright, he's just kind of a guy who's making jokes, is that how he is? But you have to go back all the way to Thor, to understand why he is the way he is. You gotta watch Thor, Thor 2, Ragnarok, Love and Thunder, Infinity War, all the Avengers actually, to understand his journey to what led him up in Love and Thunder. And that's that's one thing that I feel like is kind of a flaw in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's just there's a lot of content you have to keep up. But the thing is the content is still good to a certain degree. I, I won't say like the content is bad. Sure it might not be enjoyable, but seeing them again in a later future project really does make up for it. And on top of that, another thing I have with the Marvel Cinematic Universe are their villains. Thanos, ha- we can all agree, is a great villain. And there's another villain that's coming up, Kang the Conqueror, that we know is going to be amazing. But let's talk about the villains in the movies, in these standalone movies. I've noticed all these villains are usually either just killed, well, that's it, they're just killed. Killmonger, for example, for Black Panther, I thought should have lived because I would have loved to see him in a different movie. And perhaps with the multiverse saga now, this might happen, which is great. But back then, I didn't think that. Back then, it was just like, well, he's dead. Well, who are they going to bring him back, you know? The same thing goes for Ronan in Guardians of the Galaxy. I thought he was a great villain. I really, un- like, you know, felt the fact that he was like a homicidal guy, and I really wanted to see more of him. And when I found out he was going to be in Captain Marvel, I was very excited, only for him to not do anything, just kind of stand there, which sucked, I'm not going to lie. Another character they've done this to is Gore, the God Butcher. Now, Thor, Love and Thunder could have been, is not that great, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a film that realized it could rely on its comedy, but decided to just do that all the way Instead of focusing on story and pacing. That film did not pace very well. And the jokes were sometimes out of place. Well, most times, actually. But Gore, he's a god butcher. We only seen kill him, kill one god in the beginning of the film. After that, he doesn't do shit. He's a badass. Christian Bale did a great job with his portrayal. But we needed so much more from him. And on top of that, in that same film, the hero, Thor... He's gone through such a big journey to get to where he is. But I feel like in that film, he was just kind of used as a comedic relief every single line. And that's the thing. Chris Hemsworth has great comedic timing, but he's also a hero. He's serious when he needs to be serious. But when he's making jokes at a time when he needs to be serious, it just really ruins it. It really threw me off. And that's one of the things about... Thor, Love, and Thunder that I'm just going to talk about. Other than that, like, I am happy with the way Marvel Cinematic Universe has turned out. Uh, Like I said, if I went back in time and told myself all these events, I would have never, like, even imagined it. I mean, you know how great it was to see Andrew and Toby back on the screen in a Spider-Man film? I, you know, I've always imagined it, but I never thought it would be possible because it's like, well, why would they? But they did. And it was a pretty good movie. I'm not going to lie. Now, a lot of people might not like it. They think, oh, well, it's Tom Holland's film. Why are they in it? Blah, blah, blah. But I thought it really did bring Tom Holland's character around. And it was a very good Spider-Man trilogy for a third time. I'm not going to lie. Um, so it was great. And here's the thing. I know Marvel Cinematic Universe has a lot planned for us. And there's going to be some good stuff. I'm excited for Kang. I know Doctor Doom's going to come in soon. Fantastic Four's on the way. And I know it's going to lead up to something beautiful. But I feel like in the meantime now, they really have to not... 
I, I don't want to say slow down with the content because, you know, I am loving the content. It's great to see Marvel stuff coming out, but they should know when to limit themselves. Thing is, I don't want one year where I have to watch like seven things just to catch up with what's happening next year. I don't think anyone wants that. But, all in short, I'm happy the Marvel Cinematic Universe exists. And, yeah, that's the end of my ramble. I hope you enjoyed my video, guys. I will see you next week with my next ramble with, I don't know, whatever pops in my head.